Welcome to this tutorial request in which we will be delving into AI again. In this tutorial request we will be creating an AI that is able to pick up and drop items. In addition to that, to make it a little bit more interesting, we will also allow the player to use the exact same logic so that it's like reusable. And let's just jump into it and see what we're going to be creating today. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. This here is what we will be creating today. We have a bunch of different objects in the world, which are pickups, which the AI can just pick up by getting in a close proximity to. Whenever he picks up an item, he will drop his previous item a little bit above his head, head and it will start dropping down because of physics. And it's using the exact same logic as the player, so I can run around and pick up items just the same and have them drop over my head when I drop them. And in addition to that, we also install the key so we can kill the, the AI and have his item dropped sort of like loot over there. Yeah. Here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26 if you want to follow along. In this map, everything that we have in preparation of this is we have a nav mesh, which is why you can see this green area here. And in addition to that, we have two characters here. Now they're just copies of third person characters. I just named them differently. One is going to be possessed by a player and the other one is not. It's set in its detail settings to be possessed or not. If you type in possess, you can see player zero on this one and disabled on that one. So that one will be possessed by an AI controller. In addition to that, we have also assigned that uh, this specific AI controller, so it's just an empty AI controller that I created, is supposed to be used by these. And we can open up this and you can see that there's nothing inside of this one yet. Uh, and the character also doesn't have anything special except for the, the basic stuff here. So let's start creating what we need for this uh, tutorial. Starting off, we're going to be creating a very, very simple uh, behavior tree. So let's go to artificial intelligence and behavior tree. Let's call it BT underscore uh, AI pickup. Going into this, we can then drag off a sequence because we're just going to do a few simple things here. The, the functionality inside of the AI is not, going, not what's going to be important in this. Uh, in addition to that, you might want to create a artificial intelligence blackboard as well. Uh, I don't need to do that since I already have one created over here. You can see blackboard. You would assign it over here in blackboard assets if you don't know. And mine currently has the self-actor, search location, and next equipment. So this is from a different tutorial. Uh, if you're starting off, you're just going to have self-actor. So add a key here that's going to be a vector search location. Name it search location. That's what we will be using today. And uh, in addition to that, we also want to uh, create a task here. So create a task and choose, well, you're probably not going to get anything here, but BTT task blueprint base. Then you get the task open. You can go and rename it to something here properly that you want to name it. I would suggest that you rename it to random searching because that is uh, the task that I currently have here. So if we go open up random searching here, it's a task I created in a different tutorial, but we'll jump into this and see what it looks like. So here you go in and you overwrite <clears throat> override the function called receive execute AI, then you get this event here. From the pawn, we're gonna get its location, and then we're gonna create a get random reachable point in radius node. The radius we promote on uh, variable, and in this case, we have it set to 1000, meaning 10 meters. So this actor location and 10 meters, we get a random point. We then create a blackboard key selector variable, we make it instance editable. We drag out from that and set blackboard value as vector. We drag in our uh, vector in as value over here, and then we just report in the finish execute that we are successful. This will mean that in our blue blueprint task here, uh, behavior tree task, we can now set that the result from this key selector that we have inside, we should have our search location set to that va variable. After that, we want to do a move to, and we're gonna say that the destination we're moving to is the search location. After that, we're just gonna have a wait, and this is just so we can see that we have gone a little bit. Uh, 
So we'll put this to three seconds and that should be fine. Now we're done with all the AI essentially. Uh, what we want to do now is go back to our map. We want to open up our AI pickup controller and we just want to say on begin play, run behavior tree and we're gonna assign it the behavior tree that we're calling AI pickup that we just created. And that's everything there. We can now close the controller down. Uh, let's open up the third person character for the one that's AI and then go over here to this right part and type in a tag. Down here in tag, we can add it with a plus sign and then we can write AI. Now we have essentially put a tag on this character over here so that it's uh, an AI for our logic down the road essentially. Like so. Now let's go and actually create some logic. So first off we'll create a pickup item. It's going to be very simple. It's a blueprint class of actor and we call it bp underscore uh, pickup item. In this one we're going to add a static mesh and call it static mesh we will add a cube as the visual indicator for it and then under that we're gonna have a collision a box collision we can keep the name we will add or change the scale to three let's say it's gonna cover the mesh a little bit that will be fine i think compile save we go down here on the bottom right with the box collision selected we'll go to begin overlap from here we want to get some of the important characters. So to narrow this down a little bit, we're gonna create a blueprint interface. So we go to blueprints, blueprint interface. We call it BPI underscore pickup. In this one, we're going to create a function. The function we're gonna be creating is item picked up. And the input that we're gonna get is of the type BP pickup item class reference. Then we can say item picked up as the name. We can compile this and save and we can close this down. Going back to our pickup item, we can now save drag out from the other actor and we type in implements. We check against the interface we just created, which is called BPI pickup. And we say, if this is true, then we want to do something. If it is true, we want to send to the actor that has picked it up. So we'll send an information here of, uh, let's drag off the actor and type in picked up. We'll get this item picked up message. We'll drag it into the true. We'll clean this up a little bit. And as the item to pick up, we're gonna get a reference to ourself. Then we're gonna type out get class so we get what kind of class this specific pickup is and we're sending in that as our information into the picked up after this has happened we know that this item is no longer valid or we want to destroy it because it has been picked up by this character so we can just type in destroy actor there we go we can compile save and close this down for now we can now go back to our character which i have named character pickup in here, we're gonna do a few things. First of all, we're gonna have a function to kill off all the AIs because uh, that's part of the functionality. So we're gonna make a custom event. We're gonna call it kill AI. Uh, in this one, we're just gonna do a very simple thing for us here. We're gonna get all actors of tag and the tag we're gonna check against is the AI one that we created for our AI character. On this, we're just gonna be looping and for each loop that we're gonna meet we're gonna do something we're gonna send the message destroy actor like so and this is a bit redundant but to have this functionality called on we'll create another custom event actually we're gonna call a keyboard and key e and this we will be our activator to actually kill all ai so we can do the kill ai call there we are also going to be creating uh, an event for our R key, so we can create that keyboard R for now, so we have it available. 
and this will be our key that we are going to be like we're going to be picking up items so this will be our uh, key to drop items so uh, let's create a custom event called drop item and we can now call it from the R key like so actually re let's rename it to drop held item to be super uh, redundant or descriptive from this we need, now need to do something with our held item but we don't currently have a held item and this system to keep it smaller we're not going to have a very advanced inventory system or something like that in this case we're just going to be allowing a character to hold one specific item but this is something you could build upon of course if you want to have it more complex and more varied so we create a new variable we call it held item we make it of the type bp uh, pickup item uh, class reference like so so now we can drag out our reference over here and get we can right click on this and make a validated get to make sure that we we have it when we want to have it and we only want to drop an actor when we actually have an actor and what is happening is when we're dropping an actor we want to spawn it into the world so we'll type in spawn actor from class we drag out the held item as that and then we split the transform we want this to be where our character is but since we pick up items within the area we would immediately just pick it up if we were to spawn it so what we're going to be doing is we're going to drag out from the transform we're going to type in make we'll do the make vector we're going to right click and we're going to get actor location so the location of this character we're going to be breaking splitting this pin and dragging in the x value to x the y value to y and then just be spawning this a little bit in the air by adding a value to this so by adding the value 200 not 2000 200 we will be adding it two meters up into the air and that will allow us to give us some time to run away so we can avoid picking it up again in addition to that we can now take our actor and we can say we want to simulate physics we want to do it on the static mesh so this way it will feel a little bit more alive when we put it back into the world essentially like so okay so what more do we would need well we need to be able to pick the item up right so we created an interface let's add that interface we called it dpi pickup we can now go to interfaces and implement this event can drag the event over to our other events so it's a little bit collected over here from that we get the information of what kind of class that we have just picked up uh, by dragging this out actually let's do it this way let's get our held item and let's make it a validated get again like so this way we can do it so if we don't have a held item right now we want to set our held item to be whatever we sent in here from the get pickup and if we already held an item we want to first drop that item before we pick up the new item and since we have a function for that now we can just type in drop item or drop held item and then after that we also still want to set the the held item to be the new one that we picked up now we can compile and save this and that's all good and fine uh, going back to our kill ai we are now destroying the actor but we're not doing much more than that and if he has an item we still want it to actually drop the item like loot you know so what we can do is we can go over here to our functions override and you can see we have a destroyed function here it's called when an actor has been explicitly destroyed we'll drag this event over here and now it makes sense here that we're destroying this actor over here so what we can say is if you're destroyed you can drop item meaning that it should be like loot that's uh, appearing when, when you die compile and save like that okay let's go to the map and see if we can test this out so now we have our uh, item pickup over here we can drag it out so you can immediately see that the nav mesh is getting um, distorted by this and this is not something we want because we want the character to actually run and be able to pick these up 
So we will open up the BP pickup item. We will mark the mesh and we will type in can. Then you see can ever affect navigation. We'll put it to false. Now you'll see that it will not be affected over here. Let's see if we can pick this up. So we walk up here, over here, we pick it up, we press R, and you can see that it appears a little bit above us. However, it is not behaving completely correct because you can see that it's, okay, now he disturbed it. We, we, we kept getting an item, and that is because whenever I press R, I'm still dropping a new item because I'm never clearing it out. So, going back to our character, and there. The last part we need to do here is after we simulate physics, we need to make sure that our held item now has been cleared out. So we set it to blank and we should now only be able to pick up the item once and then throw it and it's falling on us kind of quick. Let's see if we can put it a little bit further up and there we transform it three meters above instead. Hopefully that will give us enough time. And here we go. And there I drop it. And I can pick it up again and I can drop it again. And I can also make sure to run to the uh, NPC and now he has it. And if I press the E key now he shall die. And he drops it then by being dead. So that's essentially all that we wanted to create. But let's make something fun out of this. I'll be back in a moment. Now we're back. What I've done is I've created two children of the BP pickup item. I've made one a capsule as mesh and one as a cone as mesh, and that's all the changes I've done. Then I've put a whole bunch of them into the world here now. So now that when we play, we can run around here and we can pick up items. And whenever we pick up an item, the previous item gets dropped from our inventory that we're currently holding. And the AI can do the exact same thing by running around and coming in contact with these items. And if we at any point want to, we can of course just kill him by pressing the key. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.